Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, holy cow, I hope you did not miss episode 87, where I introduce you to poker's MEDs, or Minimum Effective Doses. These are the top 10 concepts that you need to study and to master in order to dominate the tables. So if you missed it, listen to 87 like meow. Hey, poker people, thanks for sharing, thanks for retweeting and favoriting those tweets, thanks for the support, and thanks for the questions. Without y'all, this Q&A would be pretty bare and boring and pointless. So, actually, this is a first today. My wife is out of town with her friends. The boys are spending the night at their cousins. So I've got the house all to myself. First time ever, actually, uh, since my oldest was born. And so, because it's the first time ever, I've got to celebrate. The dancing girls, the clowns, and the dunk tank will all be here in about an hour or so. So let's whip this puppy out. Excuse me while I whip this out. Oh, I love blazing saddles. Okay, let's get her done. Today, I am featuring three questions from some great poker peeps. Visit today's show notes at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod88 for links to everything I discussed today and to join the weekly boost for exclusive poker strategy delivered directly to your inbox. So question one comes today from Taryn. She says, Hello, Sky. I think one of my greatest leaks is with barreling the turn. Meaning, if I see bet the flop and my hand isn't top two pair or better, I shut down. Without a value hand on the turn, I usually don't fire the double barrel. I know that there are situations where it's okay to do so as a bluff and I can win by bluffing. It's maybe fear or not enough knowledge that prevents me from barreling. Would it be possible to make some podcast slash video on this topic? Thank for you. Thank you for your great effort. Take care, Taryn. Thanks for the great question, Taryn. I'll actually be hitting the topics of sea bedding and double barreling pretty darn hard when I cover MED number six, which is sea bet theory. Uh, you know, and I'll be doing that in my new strategy podcast series that I got going out, the MEDs of poker. But that won't be for a couple months, so I wanted to answer this for you right now. Not knowing why or when to double barrel bluff is a problem that many players have. There are a few things to consider with each double barrel bluff opportunity, though, and I'll cover those for you now. The first First thing to consider is the idea of bet once, bet again. The general rule in poker is if you bet once, you should bet again on the next street. If you make the C bet for value, do so again on the turn to continue building the pot when you're likely the best. But when you're bluffing the flop, you should intend to bluff the turn unless there's a reason to not barrel. So by default, bluff once, then bluff again, unless indications say your bluff won't work. Consideration number two is position. It is so much easier to double barrel bluff when in position. When uh, when you have position, you control the action and you get to act after your opponent does on every street. When they show weakness by checking, you throw out the bluff. If they show strength by leading out, then you can fold, call, or raise based on the board and what their range is and how likely you think they're bluffing or betting for value. Position here is an incredible advantage down the streets. Consideration number three is street honesty. So street honesty, and I've talked about in other podcasts before, but it's pretty darn important, especially when it comes to double barreling and triple barreling. If you look at your opponent's stats and you see that they fold to flops, uh, or you see that they fold to flop C bets 35% of the time, but they fold on the turn 60% of the time, you know that this player is turn honest. They float a ton of flops only to give up on the turn. You've got to barrel these turn honest players. But the pendulum swings both ways, and street honesty can actually be used against you as well. You said you only barrel the turn for value. Well, your opponents might have stats on you, and for example, I don't know, you didn't tell me, but your flop c-bet stat might be 80%, but your turn c-bet stat is only 25%. So 
if this is the case, they know that you're turn honest. So they will call every flop bet in position. Then they'll bluff you off your hand after you check the turn. Or they can check call your bet out of position on the flop. Then when you check back the turn, they'll donk lead the river to take it away from you. So don't let your own stats tell your opponents how to exploit you. Consideration number four is the opponent you are up against. Uh, stations are really hard to bluff. Tags, or tight aggressive players, they're pretty easy to bluff. And lags are easy to bluff as well, especially when you're in position. Out of position versus lags is a bit difficult there. Uh, but you need to know how likely your opponent will fold with a weak hand post-flop. If he never folds, if he's a station, will call down with gut shots, with bottom pairs, with under pairs, whatever the case. If they're a station, do not bluff. If he's capable of folding, throw out the bluff. And of course, always look at his fold to see bet stats, both in position and out of position, before you decide to make that initial bluff. The fifth and final consideration is stack size. It's easier to bluff when you've got enough chips to imply a third barrel on the river. Players are much more willing to give up post-flop when a big stack is in jeopardy. If your turn double barrel puts them all in, don't expect them to fold as winning this pot will add tons to their stack. But if calling the turn bet actually leaves a pot size bet behind that is at risk for the river, they're more likely to fold there. Well, thanks for that question, and I hope that helps, Taryn. And like I said, I'll cover this, and I will dive deeper when I discuss MED number 6, which was C-Bet Theory, and that might be right around episode 115 or so. Not sure yet, but right around there. Okay, so question 2 comes to us from Joel Stott. What's up, Sky? I've heard you mention Flopzilla quite a bit. What does it do, and why is it so good? Take care, Joel. All right, well, thanks for the question, Joel. And truthfully, I just can't get enough of Flopzilla. It's my favorite poker software besides Poker Tracker 4. And the one I use the most, uh, actually, I use it in just about every single study session, unless I'm just watching a video. And even then, when I'm watching a video and the coach says something, uh, something that I can kind of verify using Flopzilla, I'll whip out Flopzilla, pause the video, throw what he, what he talks about in the video in Flopzilla, and um, I'll see if he's right, you know. But uh, Flopzilla itself is a range analysis software that helps you figure out how ranges and specific hands hit the board. It also allows for range versus hand equity, so you can see what a 10% range, how well that fares against ace-king, for example. Uh, you can use the software to hand read your opponents, and it helps you choose your pre-flop ranges for opening, cold calling, 3-betting, uh, actually 3-betting and beyond, you know, 4 and 5 bets as well. And Flopzilla lets you save these ranges for future Flopzilla calculations. And it allows you to figure out the equities as you run through hand history reviews, and it shows you which future cards will help your equity. And so it's it's actually a great software, and it's super quick and easy to use, very, very user-friendly. With just an hour or so of practice, you won't become a master, but you'll just be super familiar with it after just an hour or so. And if you'd like to see Flopzilla in action, my buddy Dennis Peterson created a video and posted it in YouTube, which demonstrates how to test for single hand strength and how well hands hit flops and hand versus hand equities. He posted it in the Facebook group, but you can also check it out by searching Searching for his channel in YouTube, just type in his full name, uh, Dennis Peterson. That's Peterson with three E's. And, uh, you know, I would appreciate it, and he would too, if all of you went over there, hit subscribe, and give the man some love. He's currently at 65 subscribers, so let's see if we can't get him up to 100 by the end of the weekend here. And, you know, I'm actually on his YouTube channel right now, and I see that he posted just yesterday a two-hour Flopzilla demonstration. This is perfect timing for this question, so two hours. Damn, Dennis, you're one talkative SOB. Good on you, mate. Well, uh, so everybody else, check that out as well, his two-hour Flopzilla demonstration. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it's good. Dennis knows his stuff. Uh, also, in the show notes for today, I've embedded a Flopzilla video for myself, as well as one from Split Suit. Once you check those out, I'm sure you'll rush off to Flopzilla.com to purchase your own license to start using the software for yourself. So happy studying, and thanks for that question, Joel. Now, for a quick little Patreon plug, I want your support on Patreon before August 31st. If you do so, you'll get a podcast, a video, and a webinar all about rejamming in MTTs. I'll discuss rejamming for value uh, as bluffs, to build your stack near the bubble, to take advantage of those limp passive 
uh, limpy passive fish, uh, which are common in lower stakes MTTs, all that and a whole lot more in my rejamming stuff here. So supporting at the $5 level will give you the podcast. The $15 level will get you the video and the $50 level will get you the webinar. Additionally, if you support at the $20 level or higher, you'll get a copy of my first ebook, which will be completed and ready by mid September. I haven't set a title just yet, but it'll be about studying poker and all the different techniques that I use to improve my game. So with Patreon, your rewards are based on the level of your support. The more you support, the more you get. I've also set some big monthly goals and I would love it if you help me hit them. Uh, If you do, you'll hear more strategy content or longer Q&As or even more frequently scheduled podcasts. So to learn more or to support me, please visit www.patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. And Richie Jenkins is the latest and greatest listener who decided to support me on Patreon. You know, whenever I hear the name Jenkins, I think of old man Jenkins from SpongeBob. Uh, sometimes my son actually calls me old man, and occasionally he'll call me old man Jenkins just for just for the fun of it. And I, I love it when he does that. It actually really makes me laugh. And speaking of love, I love you, Richie, for the support. I hope your wife appreciates you because you are one fine catch. When I think about guys like you, I get all teary-eyed. <laughs> actually, that reminds me. Oh, I look out there at all of you wonderful guys, and I say to myself, what I wouldn't give to be 20 years younger and a woman. You know, I've personally flown over 194 missions, and I was shot down every one. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've never landed a plane in my life. Now. Ah, I guess I'm in a movie quote mood today. Well, thanks for that support, Richie. I totally appreciate it. Cool beans, we are in the home stretch now. Dancing girls, clowns, and dunk tank, here I come! Right after question three here from Anonymous. Anonymous says, Hi, Sky. I love your podcast and the Facebook site. Thanks for all the great info. I just heard that you play on full flush and was wondering if there is a HUD that works on that site. I used a trial of Poker Tracker 4 to review hands I played on Poker Stars New Jersey and loved the data. Any info is greatly appreciated. Cheers from Anonymous. Well, thank you much, Anonymous. I am sorry to say, but there isn't a HUD that works for full flush just yet. I think it would need to grow as a Poker site for the different software companies to start working with it. I think it's just too small. Uh, But I do use my Poker Tracker 4 HUD on Carbon, which is Merge, uh, Merge Poker, as well as ACR or America's Card Room. It works on Bovada as well and lots of other sites that are uh, America or American, United States specific sites. But, uh, But some bad rumors are circulating about Full Flush. I don't want to say news because I don't know the validity of all this. It's just stuff I've I've read and I've heard about through Facebook and stuff. But it seems that Full Flush, they haven't been paying out for quite some time. So they may actually be insolvent. Uh, if before you put any money on or before you play anymore, do some research into Full Flush just to see how how good they're doing, I guess, you know, and that's really one of the bummers with playing on unregulated sites in the United States. No regulation means that they can do just whatever the hell they want. Without regulation, companies can make big blunders and they can go out of business or they can just choose to abscond with player deposits just one day out of the blue. Bam, we're gone. See you later. Money's in my pocket. And, you know, it's the risk that we take here playing within the United States, playing online poker in the U.S. And I'm happy, though, that you can play in New Jersey, at least on Poker Stars and WSOP, which are both regulated. So good on you, Anonymous. And thank you very much for that question. Now it's time for a poker review. Now, I'm sure that most of you know who Alex uh, Assassinato Fitzgerald is. I interviewed him back in episodes 43 and 53. He's a well-known poker pro, poker coach, big-time MTT player, plays cash as well, but mostly MTT. And he has a new book coming out called The Myth of Poker Talent, Why Anyone Can Be a Great Poker Player. I can't wait for its release on September 26th. I, I really am totally looking forward to it. He's been talking about it. He's big on the idea that you you don't need talent. You just need to know what you're doing and work hard to become great at poker. And I completely agree with that. Uh, if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this podcast trying to teach people what I know and how I've learned poker. Uh, and so I've actually already uh, 
pre-ordered my copy of his book from Amazon. And it's going to be about how anyone can be a great poker player, like I said, and that talent is not a prerequisite. It simply, you know, it takes knowing the correct path and it takes a lot of hard work. The book will teach us a model of poker that's built from scratch. So somebody who picked up cards for the very first time, taking them all the way to an elite player. It'll teach an understanding of every poker tool, and it will show us why much of what those experienced uh, players and experienced pros out there, uh, what they think they know is actually a bit wrong. And so Alex is going to prove that to us. So please support Alex by buying the book on pre-sale over there on Amazon and support me by going through my Amazon affiliate link in the sidebar of the show notes. Or just go to www.smartpokerstudy.com slash the myth of poker talent all one word of course and it'll take you straight to amazon where you can make the purchase and i will receive a little kickback for going through me i know it'll be a great book and well worth the small cost and to be honest that was more of a plug than a review but after i read the book i'll let you know what i think in a full episode Thank you so much for listening, and thanks again to Taryn, Joel, and Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous for the questions featured today. I hope my answers boost dim poker skills. If you're not already there, and if you're not, you're totally missing out. Head over to the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with some of those videos from YouTube about Flopzilla and some additional links, all at uh, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 88. And of course, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love them questions. These Q&As wouldn't be, well, I guess they wouldn't be possible without your questions. So please keep sending them in through email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. You can tweet them at smartpokerstudy or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. Alrighty, poker people. I'll be back on Tuesday for another strategy episode where I will begin the MEDs of Poker series with MED number one, opening theory and ranges. And I know that you know that I know that you know that word of mouth is the best advertising. And I am eternally grateful for sharing this show with other poker people. It only grows with your help. So I'm asking you to share it with someone who will get value from it just like you do. Send them to the show notes page to get them started on all that this podcast has to offer. And don't forget to visit www.patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to support the show and collect some nice monthly rewards. Go ahead and join Richie Jenkins in your support of this show. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I want-